Welcome to another episode of Sanford Says. I'm Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the great city of Sanford. And this week we have a wonderful topic. It's um, we're going to be talking with our environmental coordinator, Hope Duncan. Hi, Hope. Hi, guys. And we're going to be talking all things grease, flushables, and clean out caps, and all of that kind of stuff. And um, we appreciate you being here, taking time out of your busy day, because I know you're in the field all the time. And um, let's start with Hope kind of like an overview of your role real briefly and then we'll go into our community outreach stuff here about grease and sewer and fat uh, you know fat free all of that sewer stuff what's up so I run the oil and grease prevention program for the city I've been doing it now for 10 years and the main goal of my job is just to prevent the discharge of grease to the sewer system Grease is the number one cause of sewage overflows. So what I do for the city is very important. Not only does it protect our wastewater plants and the sewer system, but it also protects the environment um, from sewage overflows. Um, I inspect and permit all of the uh, food and auto related facilities to ensure that they have grease traps and oil water separators that trap the grease and petroleum products prior to discharging to the city's sewer system. Um, They're required to pump out their grease traps and oil water separators at the frequency that is designated on the permit, and they have to submit paperwork to prove that they do it at that frequency. Okay, and this is, it it sounds, it's it's not a very, um, which, how should I say this? It's It's a messy topic, physically messy, and, but it is extremely important to listen to what Hope Duncan is saying because it equals to if you don't do it millions and millions of dollars in the long run for the city of Sanford to correct things that can be prevented this is all preventative stuff correct exactly and we um, through the ordinance are allowed to go into commercial facilities and require the grease traps However, we are not allowed to require them in the homes at the residential facilities. So I do a lot of uh, public outreach and education to teach the general public um, not to pour cooking oil down the drain and to instead collect it and take it to one of the city's recycling centers. Right, which are located where? We have two of them. One is located at 412 West 14th Street. It's at the Utility Department building, and the other one is located at 300 East Airport Boulevard, the fire department, right behind the bowling alley. Okay. Um, Now, let's give you some kudos here, because I know that there are not many cities in the state of Florida that actually do this, correct? And we are one, and we have also collected an enormous amount of grease. Just last year, was it, Hope? And we want to thank those residents that are are really listening and adhering to this. Yes, exactly. We enter a contest um, sponsored by the Florida Industrial Pretreatment Association every holiday season. So from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day, um, our residents collect the used cooking oils, take them to our recycling centers, and our waste hauler lets us know how many gallons we collect. We enter the contest, and we've actually won that contest for about five years running now. Um, We collect anywhere from 200 to 500 gallons of used oil, cooking oil, just between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Unbelievable. That could have gone into our sewer system. Yes. Every drop recycled um, prevents a sewage overflow. I know a lot of people say that they go and dump it outside. Well, if you dump it outside, go take a look a couple weeks later and, and see the dead grass beneath. Um, or if you put it in the trash, that's okay, but it just goes to the landfill and takes up space in the landfill. So the most environmentally friendly thing to do is to actually collect those used oils and greases and take them to one of the recycle centers where they can be recycled into other useful products. All right. And so we ask people to, to remember to close the lids tightly, right? Yes. We ask you to, um, what I typically do is I keep a salsa jar or pickle jar underneath my sink. I put my used cooking oils in that. I seal it real tightly. Once it becomes full, I just take it right over to the recycle center. Um, We do prefer something that has a lid so that there's no spills once it's taken to the recycle center. Okay. So what people can, um, so basically for the grease preventative uh, project that we have here, it is just simply take your grease 
and put it in the glass jar, like you just said, and then take it to the recycling center. Yes. Is there anything else you recommend to do around that? Because the more more items we have to discuss, like the do not flush, there's a whole list of things. So yeah. Um, so with regards to the um, cooking oil, we also recommend. I know that your grandma might have taught you that you use hot water to rinse it down into the into the sewer system. And so all that does is send it further down the pipe where it cools further down the pipe and it congeals there. And it could be a area that you can't get to to remove the blockage. So we ask that you do as much as possible into the jar. And then you can use one of those rubber spatulas that you use when baking to remove the rest of the oil into the trash or even a paper towel. Okay. Now, so when the oil goes down, if you do this, for instance, it'll go. It could. It could harm your own pipes, right? Not just the city. Is that correct? correct? If the oil and grease settles out on your side of the property, you are responsible as the property owner for hiring the plumber to come and take care of the problem. If it gets to our side, we have to take care of it. But as you can imagine, with thousands upon thousands of residents um, allowing that oil to get into our sewer system. It does create major issues in our system, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing today and why I do what I do going out and doing educational outreach at public events. Right. We The more people that know about this, the better. We also have information in the utility department hallway uh, when you walk down there and then also on the city website. Is that correct? Have we got it on um, the website We have minimal yet? information on the website. I'm working on that. Um, but we do have the Fat-Free Sewers Board along with the Do Not Flush and the Cap the Clean Out Board, okay. always posted at City Hall. Okay, great. And then we also have pamphlets, right? You do go out to, like you said, you go to schools. Yes, and... I'm actually going to um, Millwee Middle School here in a couple weeks to the STEM Science Night. And my goal there is to teach the students and the parents that come out. And then the students can actually take that home and teach their parents if they learn about it just in the classroom for me. I am a member of the Seminole County Public School Speakers Bureau. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, hope you can come out if you're listening and you would like to have, if you have a civic organization or anything, you can come out. And How can people reach you, Hope? Um, you can call me at 407-688-5000, extension 5512. And as long as it's within the city of Sanford limits, I can go out and provide that education. Okay, so that's, I mean, it seems like it's its pretty no-nonsense uh, that to, to not pour grease down your, your kitchen sink, but, you know, it, it's what people did for a gazillion years until, you know, we, we it just had built up and built up and built up. So, or just don't eat greasy foods, right? <laughs> like, well, but wait, I, there's, I know there's in milk, butter, right? There's other things, correct? Yeah, I'm just, just thinking common, of frying a, bacon. It's a common misconception that it's only from frying bacon or frying chicken. Um, milk, we drink fat-free milk because it's full of fat. Um, salad dressings. Um, when you bake, when you bake a cake, there's butter in that. It comes from everywhere so you just have to be conscientious to wipe as much out prior to washing because that's where it comes from not just from you physically dumping down the drain but also when you're washing the pots pans plates etc the grease washes off from that okay so have we ever have we had some, an issue with our pipes uh, or has it been Yes, I, I just I just got called the other day from um, some guys in, in the field who were telling me that our lift station is constantly clogged with grease. I then looked into our mapping system and found that there were two very large apartment complexes that come into that lift station. So now I've visited both apartment complex and we are requesting that they place a used cooking oil recycling center on site and educate their residents consistently so that that will encourage them to use it rather than pouring it down the drain. We found that people just don't know any better and that if we educate by doing podcasts and public outreach, um, we can teach them and they will do the right thing. Thank yeah. you, Stanford, for that. Yeah, and you're you're an office of one, right? Handling yes. the whole thing. Me, entire... myself, and I, I run it from top to bottom. Great, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. In my opinion. All right, so what's going on with um, Do Not Flush? <laughs> so, yes, I do the oil and grease prevention program, but we're constantly, constantly having issues in the sewer system with people flushing non-flushables down the toilet. Um, it seems like common sense, but 
it doesn't always happen. So um, I also have created the do not flush board and I take that out to the schools as well. One of the major, major culprits is feminine products. So ladies, please, please do not dispose of feminine, feminine products down your toilet, throw them in the trash instead. Another thing is those lovely wet wipes that everyone likes to use because they feel so clean and fresh afterwards. Well, those wet wipes are thick, which is why you like to use them. When they go into the sewer system, they do not break down. Toilet paper is made to break down as it tumbles through our, our sewer system so that it's not a solid mass. In the sewer system, the wipes actually turn into giant ropes, and they can actually get wrapped around our pumps inside of our lift stations and other sewer infrastructure. So we're asking people, please, even if it says flushable, do not flush it down the toilet. The only thing that should be flushed down the toilet is pee, poop, and toilet paper. Okay. Why would these companies that are in the business of flushing things down the toilet, why would they not support the, why would they say it's flushable? I mean, you don't work for them. You wouldn't know. But I'm just curious, like how, because that's going to be hard for consumers because they see it on the label. It says it's flushable, but then you're hearing it. It's not a law. You're hearing it from Hope Duncan, that it's not, you know, it's not flushable. There's actually a class action lawsuit right now um, from various municipalities, private homeowners, etc., against wipe manufacturers for improper labeling of their wipes. You can go on Google and Google it and you will find it. Um, so they are um, working with the wipe manufacturers to properly label their products. And by the way, this isn't just those wipes that you use to clean your tushy. It's the wipes that you use to clean in general, those handy wet wipes that we oh, use like to the get Lysol? clean. Oh, like the yes. Lysol wipes? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So the only thing that goes down is the pee poop and toilet paper. Anything else, even like flushable cat litter, they sell it, label it as flushable. That's solid material. It's going to layer out in the sewer pipes. So you have to be very, very conscientious, especially if you're a homeowner, because it's going to be put back on you to pay for any damage that's caused on your side. You're going to have to pay for it to remove it. Right. And you know what? I know that as a, as a homeowner and also from working in the city and, and in close to you and to all of this information, you, I mean, the average person probably thinks that when you flush that toilet, it is like it's it's someone else's responsibility, but yet it's not. It's it's your responsibility. It's your city, and there is someone at the other end. So when you flush, think about a person at the other end having to, you know, manage that. And this is one of those things because the lift stations are part of the whole system for the utility plants, et cetera. So it's, it's, uh, it's not by magic that things just disappear. And same thing when you turn on your water faucet. I mean, you just do it as, you know, unconsciously and or subconsciously. And it's like you think it's, it just goes to some magic land somewhere. But it's, it's, uh, it, there's so much behind it that, that we should, you know, concern, to have concern with it is important or just to be aware. Yes, exactly. Right? Um, we have some lift stations that our sewer guys have to go to two or three times a week and physically remove the rope of the wet wipes that are flushed down from the pumps because the pumps will seize up, they will stop operating, and then that sewage is going to back up in the streets and in your homes. And that becomes a major issue. Um, residents will call us upset, but we're not the ones creating it. So by educating you, we're hoping that you also educate your family, friends, and neighbors about the same topic. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, those wipes, those non-flushables mix with that grease in the sewer system. And that creates, they call them fatbergs. I'm sure everybody's seen the news story of the one that was the size of a bus in the London sewer system. Oh, my God. Well, you, and you also have the pleasure of sharing that on our social media at times. And if you've caught wind of those photos, if you've seen them yourself, it's, it's, it's more than disgusting. And so... Yes, I know I gross you guys all out, yeah. but there's a reason why I share those photos so that you can actually see and it captures your attention and you read right. it and you can understand what physically happens in our sewer system. It doesn't just magically disappear. Right. There are a lot of us that come together to take care of that and to prevent sewage overflows yeah. and impact to our environment. It's very, very, it's a very serious topic. So we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. 
to share this information. And we hope that we're not grossing you out, but that you are, you know, the light bulb's going on, and, and we hope we make a difference in, 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 in you, the listener here. That's the whole point of these podcasts, is to become educated about city services. So clean out caps, what is that? I mean, okay. I know. So does I'm everybody sort of know what your clean out cap me. is? Um, usually right outside your house and also near the road, um, there is a white pipe sticking out of the ground that has a cap on it. That is intended to be used in the event of a sewage backup in your home that you remove the cap to allow the sewage to overflow to the outside rather than inside your home and create an unsanitary condition. However, there are a lot of people that just take it off because their yard is flooded with storm water so that that storm water can go down in the pipe and it leads to sewage overflows as well. Our sewer system is only designed to receive wastewater, also known as sewage. During rain events, all of these open clean out caps lead to what's called in the industry I and I or inflow and infiltration. Um, so we ask all homeowners, as I'm doing my grease trap inspections at commercial facilities, anywhere that I see clean out caps missing, we ask that they replace them as soon as possible to prevent rainwater from entering the sewer system. Not only do we have the issue of the clean out caps from the stormwater going down the sewer system, but you know, there are pipes underground that are broken that allow groundwater in. Our, san our wastewater treatment plants are only designed to treat a certain amount of sewage coming in. And during rain events, we get millions of gallons more than our sewer system, our, um, excuse me, our wastewater treatment plants have difficulty keeping up with that. So we also created a cap the clean out board to teach people about this very important topic. If you have an open clean out or a broken clean out, please replace it as soon as possible. Especially important to look around after your lawn guy comes through because they can often run over it with a lawnmower and break it. Okay. Now, everybody should know where their clean out is, right? um, Technically, yes. But if you're in the historic district or in an older home, um, maybe back then clean outs weren't required or... The vegetation oh. or the ground has covered it up so that you can't see it. Mm. Um, so technically, yes, but in some areas you may not physically see it. Once you know what a clean out cap is, you'll you'll see, you'll see them left and right. Yeah. Typically, they're white, but they can also be um, made out of metal. Okay, and so can does the city know if people called and asked, "I want to locate my clean out," can they? Can they show that? Can they tell um, I, from per house? Or? Um, not, I'm not sure about that because we're not going to have all the plans from, you know, back many, many moons ago. Right. But our utility staff, um, Cedric Coleman and his staff, should be familiar with the city cleanouts, which are the ones closer to the right-of-way, to the streets. Um, they may be able to assist you in locating the one that's closer to your home, but you okay. would have to give them a call to find out. Okay. Is there, uh, and what number is that? Honestly, I don't remember Mr. Coleman's number off my head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. But there's a, is there a main, you can go to the utility. Yeah, you department. should be able to call the utility customer service. 51, 688-5100. 688-5100 per Lisa. Um, you should be able to call them and they'll send you right over um, to the person that you can get a hold of to help you with that. Okay. So, so you, technically there's, so you have your clean out on your property if you're if, unless you're like what year are we talking about 50s and do you know or I, no i'm honestly okay, that's not, not sure okay. when those started gotcha before, way before my time okay <laughs> so but there is a clean out cap for the the city to do got you know if there's a is there if there is a wastewater sewage problem that's on the yes on typically the there should right be one closer to the right of way and then one right up by your home Ah, that feeds though. Like there'd be one on the right of way that's kind of for the area, your street, maybe. One, yeah, or oh. or for if there was a blockage in in front of your home, they can easily access it through the clean out cap to remove the blockage. Got you. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, again, it's just good to know. It spurs you know conversation as a homeowner or 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 renter. All right, that's interesting. Anything else that we want to add here? Um, she did just bring up renters, so I'll bring that up. Okay. Um, a lot of people are more conscientious when they actually own the property uh, because they're going to be responsible. Even you as a renter should be conscientious of that as well because the property owner will have to spend more money to repair any of these issues, and that will be put back on you in the form of, of higher rent. 
So um, just be conscientious of that. Don't dump that cooking oil down the drain. Recycle it instead. Don't flush those non-flushables down the toilet. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. I think that's pretty plain and simple. Black and white. This is Lisa Holder. Thank you for being here, Hope. This is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications, Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. Thank you for listening to Sanford Says. I'm sure Hope thanks you as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Have an amazing day. Yeah, because the more people, the more you know in local government, the better. Uh, again, you can find this podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and on the city website at sanfordfl.gov. We'll catch you next time. Thanks again for listening. Bye now. Bye.